Welcome to Rebel Chaser. My name is Gail, and I have a clip for you from Judge Boyd in Texas. She has a motion to revoke on a defendant who, for some reason, just quit reporting. You know, the easiest thing to do, she quit reporting, and this is her second motion to revoke. So I'll let you guys watch. Aria Frosto. Court is calling 2023-CR-0168A, State of Texas versus Aria Eden Frosto. Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Hank Wilkins for the state, Your Honor. Defense? Peter Calvinola for Ms. Frosto, Your Honor. And are you Ms. Frosto? Yes. Counsel, did you, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Ms. Frosto, I'm showing you what's entitled Motion to Enter Adjudication of Guilt and Revoke Community Supervision. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes. Are you the same Aria Eden Frosto who was placed on deferred adjudication in 2023 CR 01688A for the offense of burglary of habitation on May 1st, 2023 for a term of six years? Is that you? Yes, Your Honor. All right, State. Violated condition number 42 in Bear County, Texas, the defendant Aria Eden Frosto did then and there fail to report to the supervision officer as directed for the weeks of September 25th, October 2nd, October 9th, and October 16th, 2023, in violation of condition number 42. How do you plead to that, true or not true? True. In your honor, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, do you waive? Yes, ma'am. We, uh, we waived the other violation alleged in the motion. Any objection? No objection, Your Honor. Did you understand by pleading true to violation of condition number 42, the court could find it true, grant the motion, find you guilty, sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? You need to speak up. Yes, Your Honor. Knowing that, do you still wish to plead true to violation of condition 42? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find violation of condition number 40 true, 42 true. Is there a proposed agreement? There's not, Your Honor. We're, the state is asking for a, a cap of eight years in the prison, and I know, I know the defense wants to ask for something else, Your Honor. All right, defense, what are you requesting? Yes, Your Honor, my client is requesting that, uh, respectfully requesting that we possibly continue our probation. Okay, you're going to need to speak up. And everyone, everyone, you need to whisper, we're on the record. And if people are having reunions instead of chatting about cases, I'm going to ask that you hold off on your reunion talks. Yes. Your Honor, respectfully, uh, my client is requesting that she be reinstated on probation and subject to any programs that the court might deem appropriate. My client would also like to address the court. If All right. Can you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give would be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You can lower your hand. State your name for the record. My name is Aria Eden Frosty. All right. What would you like to say? I stand before you today to ask you to reinstate my probation and or give me a monitor to show you that I've matured since being 17. While being incarcerated, I have been working on my GED. I've also taken anger management courses and I've had good behavior since being incarcerated and always try to behave myself even on the outside. For being only 19, I am very mature for my age and I know I have a lot of potential. I also know my worth as a mother and a young woman. When it comes to being a hardworking, sophisticated woman, I plan on going to college when I am released also to do is what I need to for probation. I have an interest in cosmetology and plan pursuing that as my career. I have a three-year-old son that needs me at my best version of myself and looks up to me. I have two younger sisters, 14 and 13, that also look up to me as well. Since being incarcerated, I missed my son's third birthday and my sister's 13th birthday. They okay, let, me, let me stop you for a moment. So... The main question for me is, why are you not reporting? This whole thing about you missing your son's third birthday and your sister's 13th birthday, that's all on you. Sure. So why are you not reporting? Um, I had a very hard life growing up. I haven't had parents. I haven't known right from wrong most of my life. So yeah. let me ask you this. When is it your choices and it's not the fact that you had horrible parents? When does it become your choice? No. When you're 30 and then it's no longer, you can say, well, I had a bad childhood. My parents were horrible. My parents didn't raise me. So when, when does it stop being your parents' problem or your parents' fault? When is it because you're making choices? 
I've made very bad choices. No, I mean, my question is, how old are you now? 19. All right. So my question to you is, when is it, woe is me, my parents were horrible. When, it, when does it become, it's a choice you made? Right now, you're only. No, I'm when? Choice. When? Because what you're reading, you're giving me excuses as to why you didn't report. Your excuse is you don't know right from wrong, which I, I don't understand how that's even possible. But your excuse is I don't know right from wrong because I didn't have any parents to teach me right from wrong. And you're 19, correct? Yes, sir. So what at, at what age will you stop making an excuse that I don't know right from wrong because my parents didn't teach me? What age will you be when you won't come before another court or somebody else using that as an excuse? Tell me. I'm sorry, you're going to stop that. All right. So here's my other question. Why are you not reporting? I had no transportation and I was trying my best. And I, I called him multiple times telling him my circumstance. And that was my probation officer. Let me ask you this. Were you eating food? You need to say yes or no. Yes, you are. So did you have a job? No, you are. So how were you supporting yourself? As best as I could. No, what does that mean? How were you eating and supporting yourself if you didn't have employment? I had my mom, but... Uh, no. All right, so you had your mom, the same mom who's a horrible parent who didn't teach you right from wrong, correct? I chose her as my mom. She she adopted me, but I had already, they had already said I had warrants out. So and were you living with her? Yes. And where is your three-year-old? He's with me and his dad. Back and forth, I see him on the weekends. All right. So this is what I'm looking at. When, when this plea bargain was done, there were many cases that were taken in consideration. Consideration. Have you paid any of the restitution? Yes, um, I paid it when I went to probation the first time. I was paying my, my um, probation fees were $80 a month and my drug, my drug fees and I never came out dirty. I, I mean, I just don't understand. You're not reporting. I don't understand that. I know this is your, and this is your second motion to revoke. Yes, Your Honor. But so, I, I change mean, that. I, I really do. I want to change that. All right. So, you're going to, I'm sorry, but you're not a good candidate for probation. Yes, Your Honor. I mean, this is your second time you've been given chances. I don't think there's anything else that the court can do for you. I mean, I don't think she has any prior history that would exclude her from potentially a shock probation, but I'm going to find her guilty. And as previously stated, I'm finding violation of condition number 42 true. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. And I'm going to sentence her to five years in the prison. Give her credit for any time served. Probation, is there outstanding restitution? Yes, I don't have any restitution. Okay. All right, I'm going to show you what's entitled trial court certification of defendant's rights to appeal. Did you review that with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, sir. All right, you do have a limited right to appeal, and that's as it relates to the allegations in the motion, not the fact that you were on deferred adjudication. Do you understand? Yes, sir. All right. And I will tell you this, if we can go off the record, if you want me to consider shock probation, when you're at the prison, you had better be doing something to show me that you're making improvements and that you're internalizing the reason why you were sentenced. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And you can talk to her about shock probation. Yes, sir. Thank you. Judge Boyd is so correct in this because at some point you've got to stop blaming your circumstances and just throwing up your hands up and saying, you know, it's because of my childhood. That's the way I do the things that I do. I can't help it. Some po at some point, it's your choice to do those things. It's your decision. And at some point, you've got to stop making those choices. And to not report on probation, you know, reporting is the easiest thing to do unless you're off on a bender, which that could possibly be what was going on. She didn't want a failed drug test. I don't know. I have no idea, but it's 
you know, Judge Boyd hits the nail right on the head on this one. And she needed to make those changes after the last motion to revoke and she was given a second chance. Not after the second chance motion to revoke. Didn't she learn the first time? Anyway, thank you, Judge Boyd, for another great one. And I thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.